Um. Why is the sky red? What did I do? What did I do? Um. I think. Who? What the hell? What was that? What are these obelisks? That's a triangle. They've made a triangle in it. No. Oh sh! <laughs> oh. Well, Are you supposed to be out of the booth. I'm getting back in the booth. I can't tell you how many times people have tried to. And actually, I'm so doubtful of stuff that I get through email and stuff like that that I'm convinced half the time that it's just like it like this is a scam. This is a scam. Easily a scam. That's just like I received a, a message one time from someone who claimed to be <clears throat> Jade Animation's dad, and I was just like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah, sure thing. A few weeks went by, and I got another message from that same... I was just like, oh, gosh. And I remember I told Nick, I was just like, dude, this guy's claiming to be Jaden Animation's dad, and he's, like, offering us, like, like offering us stuff to help us with, like, Scribble Showdown and stuff like that. And Nick's just like, well, did you look up his name and email and stuff like that? I'm like, no, actually, I didn't. Let me look real quick. And I looked it up, and it was just like, I was like, that's his email. I was like, Actually, that's uh, Jaden's last name, too. And I was like, that is Jaden's last name. Wait, let's let's backtrace the email. That goes to a business. That's in the place where Jaden lives. CEO. Oh. <laughs> oh. I immediately messaged back. I was just like, "Holy crap, dude! I thought this was a scam. Like, I'm so sorry I haven't responded. I just, I'm just so used to people trying to scam me that I just, I just don't know what to do." And he's just like, "It's okay, it's okay." And basically, that's how we came into contact with Jaden Animation's dad. It was really cool. And honestly, to this day, I'm still blown away. And just like, this dude saw our reactions to his daughter and was just like, "Hey, you guys seem cool." Here's free tickets to Scribble Showdown. I'm just like, I, I, uh, uh, uh. also, he told us like who was working the merch table and stuff like this and that. And he was just like, I just tell him, uh, tell him I sent you real quick, and uh, they'll wise up real quick. I'm like, okay. And I was like, oh, so and so sent me. And then all of a sudden, they were just like, you know, I'm like, yeah. He he messaged us like, here's. Like, here's his phone number and everything right here. And then it was just like... Yeah, the dude went from, like, looking rushed and not wanting to talk to people to, like, holy crap. Oh, yeah, what's up, man? It's like, what's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, this was this was one of those shows where we weren't able to talk to, the to like, the people in the Scribble Showdown because, unfortunately, it's too COVID. close to COVID. Yeah. yeah, it was too close to when COVID happened. And I'd love to go to another Scribble Showdown and just, like, have some fun and see, see if we get get to one closer... Like, hey, if y'all ever come to, like, Asheville or Charlotte or Atlanta or uh, Nashville again, I'd love to love to try and make another date for that. We'll see. Uh, but, anywho, r slash scams. This is a, like, be wary of scams, everybody, because they are everywhere and they are ruthless. And they will take everything that they can from you. Because, honestly... It's just, uh, when when I googled how much money is lost to scams every year, it blew me away with just, like, how much money is just lost to the ether yeah. because of scams. Like, I don't even want to talk about scams because it pisses me off. Almost $9 billion, according to the FTC. That is ridiculous. Sheesh. Whole industries built off the backs of this the shit. fraud department for one bank and their phones ring off the hook all day long. Oh, day. yes. Yes. I worked uh, fraud at, uh, I worked anti-fraud at uh, uh, USAA through Sykes. Dude. Some of these people are just, and it's mostly people who are elderly. It's like, mm -hmm. there's one old woman who was like 78 years old. Her husband had just died and she filled out this paperwork for his USAA account and someone had took $30,000 out of her account. And we were just like, and we looked and looked and looked. And turns out, I was like, ma'am, do you know a Mahmoud Turbani? And he's like, say his name again. I didn't, is that even English? Like, mm -hmm. like, 
no, ma'am. It seems here a man named the Mahmoud uh, Turbani took took all this money out of your account uh, from another from like an, an alternate source. It shows here it was a from a teller station in you know in Dearborn, Michigan. And you're like, I've never been to Michigan. I, I've lived, I've lived in, in, I've lived in North Carolina my entire life. I don't understand how this can happen. Like, man, I'll do everything I can to get this fixed. And once they have the check in hand, and they're out the door, if it's a cashier's check, there's really nothing that can be done, because that is basically as good as gold. A cashier's check can be cashed in anywhere. Now they can catch them and potentially, like. They catch them on fraud and stuff like that, but by the time you learn about it, it's been because by the time like I looked at this, it had already been a week since it had happened. And MoneyGram is notorious for scam artists as well. Yes. Um, when I worked at a pharmacy, uh, there was this elderly woman who came in showing a picture of this younger man and she was like, This is my fiance and he has a kid and I have to send him five thousand dollars and i'm like ma'am i cannot process this because you know you know being in a manager position you have to you know recognize fraud or whatever so but she came in several times trying to process several large transactions and And you just can't you can't do it yeah i now, Some, now they do it through gift cards. They do well, it through like yeah. Amazon gift cards. Um, I still can't believe Google. people think that the IRS would be like, "You need to send us Amazon gift cards." Yeah, it's like, ridiculous. But the see, government, they don't want Amazon gift cards. They want your money. Yeah. Yes. Also, don't give your credit card information or debit card information over the phone to anybody. No. No. It can because, get really crazy really yeah. fast. And protect your passwords. Yes. Yeah. I've learned that multiple times because of my uh, because of my multiple attempts, like people attempting to hack our YouTube channel and my Facebook and all this. It's just... Also, if a that super... That shit ain't happening no more. If a super attractive person contacts you from a social media site, do not send them money. No simping, boys. Anyway, no matter how much, how many times they say, "Oh, I love you," and you're like, they, the it's best like thing unless they actually like say it to your face in front of you, don't believe it. Even though they have a family and whatnot on their actual Facebook, like, and okay, stuff. good for you. Tell them to get a job and get working. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get into this. This is r slash scams. You should, uh, um. My girlfriend's dad has been investing money into a crypto scam company. Is there any way to get his money back? He says he's giving his money to a broker called Crypto Guider, and the platform he's been using is called w- whatever that is. DNX he's put ten thousand dollars into this thing, and he says he's got twenty-six thousand, but they won't let him take his money out. He says they're going to try and make him a deal to stay with this company. He's been putting money into this thing since October of 2022. Edit. Since posting this, I've been privately messaged by several people advising me on how my GFS father can get his money back. Some of your advice has been to hire a hacker. Other advice has been to reach out to a law agency. I intend on reporting this, but if you message me, I'm just going to assume you're a recovery scammer, even if your intention is to actually help. Nope, this is a very common topic on this subreddit. You will not get your money back. Warning, you will start to see messages in this thread and in your inbox telling you that someone can get your money back for you. They are also scammers. Report and block them. They are recovery scammers. Sorry to say that money is unfortunately long gone. I got Mm -hmm. two people messaging me about this right now. Thank you for letting me know. I was never going to use their services, but I appreciate the information. Did we just dodge a scam? Or was he really just want nice pictures? What? Hold on, let's see. This has been sitting in my mind for months. I've tried looking through this sub to see if anybody encountered anything similar, but I haven't seen any yet. So, my friend and I traveled to Amsterdam a couple of months ago, you know, whatever. We were sitting by the canal, chatting and chilling. Then a guy came up to us and asked us to take a picture of him with the view using his phone. We only took a couple of pictures for him. Then he checked the pics and was like, oh, his phone screen cracked, so the quality of the pics were not good. He liked Amsterdam, so he really wanted nice ones. He then asked us if he could use our phone to take pictures for him. Yes. That is his game. Yes. 
Uh, the, uh, the, yeah. Uh, here's the thing. If you send something through airdrop, unfortunately, there's no guarantee that you're not going to get something back. Also, do not let anyone else hold your phone, mm -hmm. especially if it's unlocked. Do not let them hold. And send them. No, no, no. I thought it sounded weird, like screen crack and pick quality aren't really related. So I told him we use both, eh, well, Androids for one thing. He said okay and left. We. Yeah, the, the, there's there's also these scammers who will literally like take a picture of you and then hand it to you like a Polaroid. They'll hand it to you and they'll be like twenty dollars, mm -hmm. and they'd be like um, no, and then you try to give the Polaroid back and they're like mm -mm, mm, we. Get, $20. And at that point, it's just like, at that point. <laughs> just rip it off. Well, no, 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 because. I be, just throw it on the ground at the feet and go, at their feet and go, like, go fuck yourself. And walk yeah. Away. And then they start following you around and just being like, this guy stole $20 from me. I took his picture and he didn't give me $20. And they try to make a scene. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exactly what they try and do. They try and pressure you. You see that in New York a lot. Yeah. Oh, I would be like, you're about to get place. your fucking ass beat if you don't leave right now. Like somebody's going to get threatened. You're about <laughs> to have your fucking camera broken if you don't get step off. It didn't happen happen as much with Kathan with me. So well, no, no, they they <laughs> they look for people by themselves. They look for people by themselves, usually women, to try and intimidate them into giving them money. And this is just how these street hustlers work. And I've had that happen to me maybe once or twice. Like me being a bigger guy, like they like most of the scammers stay away from me mm -hmm. in terms of like on the street. Um, Mom, when she went to Europe. There was there oh, was a, she told me about that story. There was there was one where these guys try to give you a bracelet. Do not take it. Mm -hmm. Because the very moment you take that bracelet, you mark yourself. When you mark yourself, these people will see that and this guy who gave you the bracelet has labeled you an easy mark for being robbed. Mm -hmm. And basically these guys will walk up beside you and walk up behind you, and then they'll try and steal anything they can from you, pickpocketing, like like going into your bag real quick, bumping into you, like trying to like swipe your phone from you and stuff like that. Also, it's, she talked about it's insane. being in an airport in Paris, and there was a fake choking incident, and while all of the people went to check on the person, all the other people that were in on it were stealing their stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, there's also another one too, uh, baggage handlers. Uh, if you ever come, if you ever leave a train station and you see like, and you see someone standing there, uh, like dressed up as like a baggage handler, you know, with a little hat and stuff like that, mm -hmm. do not give them your bags because they will grab one of your bags and then they'll run off. You'll run after them, and then their friends will come along and grab the rest of your shit, and then they'll take the rest. Mm. It's it. There are so many scams out there, dude. So fucking many. It's like, like if someone grabs your stuff and runs off, instead what you do right then is you basically grab what you your remaining stuff and like guard it because mm -hmm. the sharks are swimming and they're coming for it. I saw him went to another group of girls and I think they also declined because he walked away from the canal. So this has been sitting on me and my friend's mind. Did we escape a scam? Oh, absolutely you did, for sure. Yes. Simplest version would be that you get your iPhone out to take pictures, start to send the airdrop, then he acts confused as it's not coming through and innocently asks to see your phone where it's sending, and then bam, when you're not paying attention, he grabs your unlocked phone and runs off. Bingo. Boom. Oh, yeah, that would have been bad. Is this a scam? If so, what's the end game here? I don't know. Are you planning on gifting me 2K? Actually, that's a good idea. Don't get offended why I'm sending you some cash, dudes. Honestly, the company I invested in, they reel on giveaway today, so support peep who need some help to pay off their <laughs> rent and bills or fix seed up some things out for good living. God, that this, is the, this is some of the worst broken English I've ever seen, ever typed. I'd be like, block. Be like, uh, I would just be like, I would type back, glad to help use Hopes you enjoys alls of monies I sends. What is what is cash app? Oh, I got one. It was a picture of somebody. Um, and it was a text message. And it had like, they sent the picture and they were like, 
they asked me who I was, and your mama got the same thing. Mm. And she's gotten it twice. Okay. Sometimes you lead those people on for a little bit. <laughs> Just <laughs> I do. To piss I, them off. Well, that's what I keep doing. I keep getting these spam calls, and I keep answering in different languages. And then Nathan does that. And then I keep getting, I keep getting calls back in that language. Like I'd be, mm-hmm. I'd be like, "Hola, qué pasó? Se cómo se dice?" Yeah. And then all and of a sudden, they'll talk in and then Spanish. next thing you know, I get a call in Spanish. I'd be like, "Bonjour, <laughs> uh, bon oui, merci, <laughs> thank you." And then all of a sudden, that uh, all of a sudden, I. Like, the phone hangs up, and then I get a call back in French. Like, Jesus. How many of these do they have? And I thought about, okay, what about German? And so far, I haven't gotten any more, because I think they realize that, you know, they're barking up the wrong tree. This is a huge blessing that normally comes in a while. They do this to support people, although trying to pay off their bills, or for, this is just the worst thing ever. Uh, let me let me make it a little more robotic. To pay off their bills or for those trying to fix up something nice this year, but I know it's hard to believe anyone. This is a massive run on sentence. Days, so, <laughs> but I'm serious at this subject. So tell me how you would like to receive the gift of two thousand dollars cash app tag bank transfer PayPal Zelle. Hope you have one. <laughs> uh, this guy, who seems like an average Joe on his pics, but has some posts about Bitcoin earnings with some screenshots of Bitcoin but not too many, mainly doing average Joe stuff. What's the end game here? Would he then send more than he says and ask to send some back? Any way to actually get something out of this or lose, lose and report? In order to receive your blessing, you'll have to front up some sort of transaction or verification fee. Then they take your money and don't give you anything. It's that easy. Advance fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they use words like blessing to give it a religious overtone. Nigeria, Jamaica, and India are making billions partner's yes. mom asked for social security number to make him a beneficiary on a life insurance plan no. and he got a text this week telling him that a payment is due and something feels nice. off hmm. all right again. let's get down to the the nitty gritty here what kind of scam would be going on it was definitely his mother i've never heard of an insurance company sending a beneficiary a bill for a life insurance plan can anyone explain what could be happening? I'm trying to get him to call the office. Verified number is to a local independent office because at first it seemed like maybe a phishing attempt. And I'm trying to get him to request a copy of the policy. He seems to believe it's not a big deal and his mother got defensive when he spoke with her earlier today after the text. Update. I'm very glad after reading this that I'm totally not overreacting and should have been as concerned as I was. He called the insurance company to inquire about the policy and was told that his mother has been paying for life insurance for he and his sister since they were children. Apparently, she was late on a payment and his contact information was listed for alerts. And when he talked to his mom, she said she was just a few days late on a payment. After not being completely satisfied, we checked his Credit Karma account and he has no new open account or anything suspicious either. I'm absolutely going to be diligent about this with him and make sure he's protected a bit because he's not exactly on great terms with his family. Thank you all. Well, I hope everything's okay. Well, look at you. Look at you. Kitty cats everywhere. Eat. Hey there. Legit scam or just straight up crime? Got stopped by a man in the middle of an on-ramp on the highway. He stood in the middle of the road and had me pull over. He seemed in distress, so I rolled down my pass. No. No, do not. No. Passenger window to ask if he was okay. He gave a quick story about how he was from a distant city and was robbed or whatever. He asked me for money for gas. He then took off the gold chain around his neck and a large gold ring on his finger, offering it as exchange for gas money. Up until this point, everything seemed legit. But something about the way this guy was just throwing jewelry at me seemed off. As oh. politely as possible, I gave him back his jewelry Pause. and said, I We actually, this happened to us when we were traveling somewhere. It, and it was Jacob who was driving. And he, the guy gave him, it was fake gold. It was a gold chain and a gold ring. And Jacob gave him money. Because he, you know, the guy said that he would ha- didn't have gas or something. But he he was all dressed up real nice. Let me and, guess, let me guess, the chain and the ring were worth exactly zilch. Yeah, they were fake. Yeah, figured. That's exactly their point. Like, they'll buy, like, a cheap 
one like like a cheap dollar like two dollar five dollar chain if it can get them twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that whole thing like telling somebody you don't have cash on them and like I can follow you to an ATM. I had somebody do that to me no. in uh, Chattanooga, and I was just like, uh, no. Follow you to an ATM? No, yeah. no. I was like, in absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, and uh, the other thing was I actually gave the dude a little bit of money when I first walked past him, and then he came back and like hit me up again, and I'm just like, you already talked to me, dude. I I had some scammers hit me one time. Uh, hit me up for money one time. I was outside of a Walmart, and dude walked up to me like he knew me. He was just like, "Yo, man, yo, um, can you uh, like, like, can you help me, man? Like, I need some gas in my car because uh, you know, I, you know, me and my family, we, you know, we ran out of gas and we're sitting over here. We're trying to get gas so we can go somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I was like, I don't know, man. He's just like, Yo, man, where are you from? You look familiar. I'm like, uh. Wise County. He's like, oh man, I've been. Uh, I'm from Wise County, man. I got uh, my house is up in Coburn, and I'm like, I'm like, I know Coburn. I was like, and I was just like, oh, what the hell? And I just drive over to the gas pump, and I give him ten dollars to pump into his car and everything, and then <clears throat> he's like, and you know he's sitting there, you know he's still jawing on and jawing on and everything, and then. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, he's just like, man, I appreciate it, dude. Appreciate it. Man, when I get, it's like, me and my fam, like, we've been trying to get back to, we've been trying to get back to Clintwood now for, like, the last, for, like, the last, like, three days. I thought you said your house was in Coburn. <laughs> he basically is just like, I-, I meant to say, I meant to say Clintwood, man. I meant to say, and I'm just like, I'm like, whatever, dude. Just, just go. And I turned around, and he's just like, bless. He's like, he's like, I, he's like, bless you, man. I'm, I'm like, like whatever. And I just got in my truck, and I was like, and that's the last time I ever help anyone out up here at Walmart. I don't have any cash on me. He then said he could follow me to an ATM. Yep, that's where it is. That's where it is. I said no, thank you, and drove off. Was this a legitimate interaction? It almost never is, is it? Pulling over in these types of situations will get you carjacked or even killed in some parts of the yeah. world. OP needs to watch some more zombie slash apocalypse movies or spend some time in Joburg. No! Don't spend time there, Joburg? Please. Johannesburg? Come on, dude. South, Afri- South Africa. South oh. Africa. Johannesburg, South Africa. It's one of the carjacking capitals of the world. Mm. <clears throat> the only people following me are Reddit OnlyFans models with barely any karma. Is this a scam? I don't know. Usually. Just from that description, it sounds like one to me. Yeah, if anybody and comes can... up front of my car in the middle of the road, the only thing they're about to get is almost run over. <laughs> yeah, they better just move. Yeah. Or And also, do not stop for a car seat in the road either, because that's a scam. Well, car seat or those pylons. Sometimes these people will just put pylons across the road, like all mm. the way across the road, and then one of them will come out with like a with like one of those like uh, hunting vests on, like they're part of a road crew. I've seen that. What? Yeah, the like, dude is like dude literally it was a it was a um, a camera it was like a, a dash cam, and the guy was just like it was like he he rolled down his window. The guy started to come up out of the woods. And he had like an object in his hand. He couldn't make out what it was from a distance. Oh, he, okay. And he's just like he rolled down his window. He's just like, is that is there road work going on, man? He's like, yeah. They shut they 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 shut the road down up here. And as soon as the guy like looked away and pointed down the road, the guy booked it and went and ran over the pylons. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you could hear behind him, pow, pow, pow. Mm. oh shit! Like three shots were fired at him. Fuck and that. Yeah, it's. It's terrifying out there. You can see following me have only fans and barely any karma and no posts. They have a link tree of things. Is this a scam? All followed me at about the same time. Is it common? Yes. It's definitely a scam. In the past two days, I've gotten five followers. Yeah, that same thing happened to my old Reddit account. That's why I deleted it, because it's garbage. Ah, the scam is they follow a million people. 50 click on your profile, one signs up. Feel free to block or ignore, but those accounts don't know who you are. But is it a scam at that point, or is it just really garbage bot advertising in the hopes that you get the one sign up out of a million people to your OnlyFans? My dad is helping his girlfriend by receiving packages? I've heard of the scam before, but I don't know what it's called, and I'm having trouble searching for it. 
All I know is, 40 years younger, they met online, probably Facebook, she allegedly buys and sells stuff on the internet to make a living and she needs my dad's assistance. He said he receives packages, but I don't know what happens after that or whether he's giving her money. Anyone know what this is called and how it works? Ah, here we go. The person he is dating does not exist. Open the packages. There are one of two things books or boxes with cash stuffed in them, or relatively expensive merchandise purchased with stolen credit cards. If they contain a book stuffed with cash, they're the result of a scam. Please open these boxes and contact the person who sent the package. They were just scammed and need that money returned to them. If they contain relatively expensive merchandise, typically a hundred bucks or more, the authorities will ultimately come after your father as these packages were shipped directly to him. Oh boy, got a tech- Yeah. Hmm. <gasps> That's fucked. Today that said, PayPal fraud department. Did you attempt a transaction of I got multiples of those. Cents? I had multiples of those. Like, PayPal fraud department. Shows here that you were charged $282. It's like, is this, like, is this correct? Send your credit cards so that, send your credit card number so that we can verify if this was, if this transaction was, no. They want, Yeah. Please reply with yes or no to approve or deny the transaction. If no, customer service will contact you shortly. I'm fairly certain it's fake since I don't see any other charges or activity on my PayPal. But it didn't include a link, so I don't see what the scam is. Should I respond? Hmm, seems interesting. The, the scam, scam is, is they find yeah. a live person who's gullible enough to respond to a text from an unknown number. The next step is to get you on the phone and talk you into giving them information that you shouldn't be giving out to gain access to your account. Mm -hmm. Since, as you already said, there's no transaction, just delete and ignore. Funny story, something did happen to me with my PayPal account recently. It actually kind of surprised me. It seemed so weird because some random dude, some random scammer, sent me a direct request for $600 and then wrote, uh, this is a bill for blah, 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 blah. It was just kind of weird that they, they just sent a request. So I just, I didn't even ignore it. I didn't even click deny or anything like that. I just let it sit there. And then a month later, he retracted it. So he just gave up. <laughs> I thought it was quite funny. Avoided airport cab scam at Heathrow. Oh yeah. Just flew into Heathrow in London for the first time at around midnight. We exit to grab a cab, and there's someone standing in the exit asking people if they need one. There aren't many people around, and we think he might be the airport's cab attendant, but we're confused. We say we need a cab, but are hesitant, and about a second later we notice in the distance where the real airport <laughs> attendant is with a cab queue. The scammer points us to a completely different direction and to follow him. We don't move. He notices that we've seen at this point where the real cab queue is. He says, there's a two hour wait for cabs right now. Come with me. We refuse and walk up to the real queue and got a cab to our hotel in less than 10 minutes. They were gonna kill you, dude. <laughs> yep. Take your money. Like run your pockets. Oh wait, no. I was like, uh, I was like, this is a Heathrow. This is in uh, London. So it wouldn't be run your pockets. It'd be, be like, bit funny, in it. <laughs> it's a bit funny, and it give me the bees, bruv. It's like the the bees. Bees make bees make honey. Honey rhymes with money, so give me the fucking bees. Yeah, <laughs> Cockney rhyme slang. Yeah, and yes, yes, I am assuming that all hoods in freaking London have a Cockney accent. <laughs> I remember the one time I actually stayed in Cambridge and landed at Heathrow, of course. Uh, I made sure before getting there that I had my girlfriend at the time, a family friend of theirs who does private driving, I made sure to hire him directly instead. I am not going to get into a cab <laughs> at my, my first outing in a foreign country. I'm not gonna do that, because they're gonna kill me. We exit to grab a cab and there's someone standing at the exit asking people if they need one. This happens at every airport, and any airport I've been to has signs posted about it. In general, you should not follow random strangers pretending to be able to help you or give you free things. Yeah. Always look up the official services. Yes. You're right. We're from Chicago, where there are signs everywhere about it. It was just late, and we'd been traveling all day, and we're confused, thinking he was the attendant. That's how they get you. House across uh -huh. the street is for rent. There's a real listing and a fake one. The house across the street from me has been listed for rent for a bit now without much foot traffic. Not surprised given what they're asking. The company that owns it has done a bunch of renovations though and it's looking nice. 
All of a sudden yesterday, there was a steady flow of potential renters looking at this house. It's one of those self-tour things. Sign up for a time, they'll send you the lockbox code. One family knocked on our door and asked if we knew the owner. I told them it's a corporation, but I don't remember off the top of my head. They'd been texting with some guy who wanted them to cash app the deposit, and the rent was half the market rate. Nope. Been there long enough to know instantly that was a scam. Asked my better half, and she remembered the company's name, looked it up in the county records to confirm. We called the company and let them know about the fake listing. I'm guessing they changed the code uh, almost every daylight hour since someone's been standing outside, unable to get in for their tour. I've now stopped over a handful of people from getting scammed. Some have driven over two hours to see this place. I stuck some signs on the door warning people of the fake listing with the company's approval. Reported the fake listings I found on Rent.com and Apartment Finder, but they're still up. Of course they are. Called the police non-emergency number two. Let's hope no one else gets taken by these scammers. If you got any other ideas, please let me know. Damn, whoever ends up- Yes, kill the scammers. Renting that place is gonna find they have a heck of a good neighbor. I mean, I'll say, that's putting it lightly. I've been getting an uptick in these wrong number texts, often with the red flag stilted language like, sorry to bother you with my presence, but they never ask for anything or follow up after I say wrong number, so I'm not really sure what the scam is. I've never had them tell me I could unsubscribe before, though, so that's fun. I'm Alice. Are you the finance professor that Jesse referred you to? Nope, wrong number. Sorry. Bye. Oh, yeah, there it is. Reply stop to unsubscribe. Cute. Someone got their two scam scripts mixed up. That is just adorable. <laughs> is this a scam? I don't understand what their aim or end game could be. I feel like that's their strat now. Just be confusing. I have an item listed on Facebook Marketplace for 2K. A buyer messaged me with an offer. I countered, and then they asked for my address to pick it up. I gave it to them, and they said they'd be here Sunday. Today rolls around, and I ask if they're coming. They responded with a live location sharing of them on my block, but not quite at my building. I respond with my own live location and tell them to come to my building lobby. Then they never respond, and the location sharing stops. I look at their profile and realize it's a 2023 account with one friend, both based in Angola. So how did they spoof their location and why? They never asked for a phone number or anything like that, so now I'm just a little spooked. Thanks in advance. Do you have security cameras and a good lock on your doors? It's possible you're being set up for a robbery. Yeah. Especially <laughs> with a high value item. Always meet buyers somewhere in public, like a police station, parking lot, and Do make sure they give don't- give them your address. No. Anytime someone asks for location sharing or anything like that, or tries to like, tries to do anything like, tr pressure me into doing something, I'm like, no. Like, well, you're gonna miss out. I don't care. It's like, but but we need your location. I'm just like, no. no. Meet me at. Yeah, I'm not a I'm, Walmart. Exactly. With I'm cameras. Not, yeah, I'm not going to be. Yeah, I'm not gonna give you my house location because I ain't having it. And if you show up here, uninvited, I'm gonna greet you with my shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> follow you or slip a GPS tracker in your vehicle. Thanks. I suppose that could be a possibility. Luckily, I live in a very secure building, so it'd be difficult for anyone to come in and try anything. 14-year-old daughter wants to meet her online No. Friend. No. Oh, 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 oh my oh, god. Oh, oh. So, I told you about that one girl that wouldn't leave me alone and she tried yeah. to, like, force me into a video call. I'm like, no. It's like, because when, because here's the thing. This girl proclaimed to be a big fan and everything. She was, I think, fourteen or fifteen, and mm -hmm. she was, and she was begging me. She's like, "I just want to get a video call with you. I just want to talk to you." I'm like, "No, you're not. Like, you're not of age." And there are just so many that, like, I tried to do it with like other people there, so that like it wouldn't be anything like illegal, or, like potentially illegal or anything like that. But no, nah, I, I just refused to do it because it's like. There are so many things yeah, that could go wrong just like that. From, like everything on the channel because she wouldn't fucking leave Nate alone. Yes. And uh, how many accounts did she make? Like 20? Yeah, she made too many extras trying again and again. Hmm. My daughter met, supposedly, another girl her age online from a game over a year ago. Says she's her best friend and lives about one and a half hours from us, and now wants to meet her in person. I don't want to deny my daughter the chance to meet her friend if she really is legit, but my don't meet strangers off the internet alarm bells that were drilled into me are going off. Apparently the girl's parents want to have a video call with all of us. Them, their daughter, me, my wife, and our daughter. 
first, and then we meet at lunch at Applebee's halfway between us. I know it would be easiest for me to just say no, but she has been hounding me to be able to go and meet her friend, and says she and the girl have exchanged pictures of them doing specific things like having a tissue box on their head, and that she knows the difference between a girl her age and a weirdo pretending. I don't see the angle of how a scammer would benefit from chatting and role-playing horses for a whole year just to meet a kid in public with her parents, so I wanted to see if this was a known scam. Hmm, let's see. If they're willing to meet in public and haven't asked for money or any personal information from you, I'd say it's most likely that it's real. As a safeguard, if you do end up driving there, make sure somebody knows where you're going, for how long, I'm assuming it'd be a day trip, and have your find my phone on. Low key, I'd have a friend grab a nearby table and observe just to be safe. Yeah. Unlikely to be mm -hmm. an issue, given the context here, but it's another layer of safety. <laughs> I've always agreed on this sentiment, you know, be careful, but... So that's I one mean, situation that does kind of sound like it's probably legitimate. It could be it could legitimate. Be, but also, people go to so many great lengths to to get people. Yes. Money. Or get, get you know, or human someone. trafficking. You know. It... And, and for me, I would say, I would say, I would reciprocate to a degree, but still be, still be hesitant. Yeah. I mean, all those precautions were very, very smart. Yes. I mean, find my phone, letting somebody know where you're going. I mean, if you have a video chat with you there as parents and their their parents there and everything, like, that's enough for me to be like, all right, like, you know, this is probably legitimate. And like they said, bring a friend to grab a nearby table and just make sure nothing weird goes down, you know? Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Ages of uh, Skype and Discord and other video calling thing. Hell, FaceTime, for goodness sakes. Isn't there an Android version of that too? So, at this point, why haven't they done that? That's how I always verified that who I'm talking to is indeed a real person, not just specific photos. I'm like, well, let's video chat, let's do it. You know, I, I, why haven't they done that yet? I probably just got scammed by a fake job. Oh no. Two days ago, I got a text from this company called Visertech or Visertech, offering me a tech job, and I looked at the website and thought it was legit. After that, I did an interview on Skype that was through text, and I answered around 20 questions, and after 20 minutes, I was told I got the job. After that, I filled out an agreement with my W-2s. Oh, my and God. No. Oh, with a W two, which gave them my social bank security account? bank. Yeah, you even when a legitimate job asks for that information, you still need to be like protective of it. Yes. And blah blah blah, right. which gave them my social security bank account number, name, oh address, etc. I thought it was still legit until the guy said, "I need to buy an H E B card or a." <laughs> Wow! Well, he just gave us a social security number. All right, cool. Get some Steam gift cards from him. He's obviously that fucking stupid. Steam gift card and show the back, too. I did it, and I know I'm probably a complete dumbass. I did yes. ask him why, and he said the accounting department needs to see it to make sure it works. Yes, you're a complete dumbass. My dude, like, close down your bank account, move, get a new phone number, Get a and tell the social security office, hey, someone may try and like someone may try and scam y'all here soon. Mm. Jesus, what now he's saying I will get the startup bonus for the job next week, which will be $120, and I'll call him tomorrow. <sighs> I froze my bank accounts and credit. Thank you all for your help. Sorry I took up people's time with my bad decision. Dude. Yes, this is a scam. No company ever does interviews just by text. Also, mm -hmm. no companies require their employees to use their own money to buy gift cards for the company. First off, you need to block and ignore the scammers. Next, because you gave them your social security number, you need to put a credit freeze on all your accounts. For future reference, you need to do more than just looking at the company's website. Anyone can say they represent any company. Scammers sometimes even go to the lengths of searching up who works in the company, which is extremely easy with LinkedIn, to impersonate yes. that person. First day of work. 
Second day travel overseas? Is this a scam? Hi guys, I don't know if this is the right channel for this, but I'm very concerned for my friend's sister. She's a university graduate. She applied for some sort of logistics job on LinkedIn and went for an interview. She went to the office for her first day, and the next day they're asking her to fly to the Philippines to do stock taking for two nights with flights and accommodation no. paid for. She's oh based in Singapore. God. The company is supposedly a well-known luxury brand. No. Oh, that's human trafficking um, no. right there. No. She will never come back. No. You will never see her again if you let her go. Has, and it, has I, anybody seen Taken? Yeah. I I have. I've seen well, I've seen the first two. The third one I refuse to watch. I find it highly suspicious. Is it possible for an entry level job to ask you to go on a business trip on such short notice? Absolutely has anyone not. ever experienced or seen that happen? No. I'm just worried that she would be human trafficked to some syndicate. Mm. Yes, Let's yes, see. exactly. She might be asked to pay for some kind of a deposit before the trip. She won't get the money back and the trip's not real. Or she'll fly to the Philippines and get kidnapped. Human trafficking is unfortunately still a thing. Either way, it kind of smells fishy. Yeah, I would I would quit that job now. Scammer wants my dick pics. Really, that's oh it? <laughs> that's a new one. Wow. Yeah, like, uh, they'll pretend to be a hot lady. They'll be like, send me a picture of your dick. And then if you're dumb enough to do it, then they're going to be like, now I'm going to send this to everyone you know, unless you send me $500 through Cash App. Like, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, my God. Be like, all right, go ahead. I don't care. Don't send people pictures of your dick, or your or your your goods. Just keep your goods so safe. Ask you send them a picture of uh, Richard Nixon with the caption. It's tricky. Yeah. Also, th this just reminds. Uh, this is a long time ago for some people out there. Uh, the Amanda Todd situation. I don't know if you all remember that. This girl that sounds familiar. This yeah. girl. Uh, she was she was in high school, and this guy on a website. You know, like it was one of those like chat sites. I forget if it was Chatterbait or Omegle. I can't remember. But this guy was like pretending that he liked her, told her she was beautiful, this and that, blah blah blah. Basically, coerced her into flashing him, and she did. And basically, he took a picture of that and told her basically, yeah, if you don't do what I say now, if you don't like take even more spicy pictures for me, then I'm gonna send this to everyone you know. And hmm. she refused. And he did it, and basically she got bullied into into oblivion over it. And there was someone who actually made a uh, made a profile on Facebook, and the profile picture was her her goods, which mm, it. it is. And she wound up self terminating. Mm. It's a very sad story and. It's a, it's it's a story out there that I think everyone should take into account as to like be careful with what you share online because there are malicious people out there who will do everything they can to take advantage of you and take everything from you and they have no they have they have no moral center they like morals are not even a concept to a lot of these people yeah don't uh, do those little quiz things that are on Facebook. Either. Nope, that is how they learn stuff about you. Yeah, that's how they learn how to how to get around your password protection. Yep. I was talking to this girl, and she started sending pictures of herself naked and kept pressing me oh for dick I said stupidly, I'm not convinced. So she kept sending them. Finally, when I wouldn't send pics of my dick, she threatened me with a pic of my college Insta page and screenshots of my followers, saying she'd send a pic of me shirtless along with the pic of someone else's what do i do <laughs> congrats on being in the 99th percentile of sending no pics when scammer pretending to be a woman asks for them block ignore maybe deactivate social media temporarily but they probably have your contact ready to be spammed anyone tells you someone weird started messaging them explain a scammer is trying to scam you and explain that this scammer is just scamming and sending other people's so that's what's going to happen if they do send one. And they should block and ignore them. Also, start reporting the accounts you know of. Unfortunately, Meta sucks at getting scammers off their platform, so probably not that they suck. It's probably that they don't want to. They love that one billion plus number. Was my girlfriend scammed? Apologies in advance for not knowing the lingo. We're based in Japan, if that changes anything. My girlfriend got introduced to some Forex group that operates on a platform called 
well, this. Pretty sketchy, claims to be registered in Canada but with an address in wherever that is. Shelly. And apparently primarily targets customers in Japan. A little less than a year ago, things were going well. Moderate losses every now and then, but mostly a fair amount of profit, until suddenly she and everyone else in the group, including the person that introduced her, lost everything in a day. When she reached out to find out more about what the hell happened, she got a copy-paste, understandable, as he was likely getting thousands of messages, response from the trader apologizing and saying that he was fairly new to the business and got overconfident because he was on a win streak. She's ah. suspicious, so she's been contacting law offices, but has been told that she needs to first contact an investigation agency to assess the likelihood of fraud. She did so, and they were all quoting about $4,000, but one of them called back today saying that they have 10 other people from the same group proceeding with the investigation. They say that when they made a request to freeze the bank accounts of the trading company in question to investigate, they complied, which means fraud is very likely. Damn, she lost about $60,000. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, hmm. brother. Think. Oh, your girlfriend was scammed out of the money that she invested and is now being scammed by a, a recovery scammer. No bank accounts have been frozen. There's no point in contacting a lawyer because there's nothing they can do. She should stop all contact with any kind of law enforcement since it's clear that she cannot tell the difference between real ones and a scammer. Hmm. Agreed. Another scam that I thought of while they were talking uh, is adoption scams. Yes, I've heard about those. Um, there's a YouTube couple that I follow that recently had that happen to them, and what they, what happens is this person will see that these people are wanting to adopt, and they'll like personal message them and uh you know ask for money and they'll send like fake sonograms and i mean it's crazy and it's completely devastating to the people who are actually wanting to adopt yes too well yeah and it it, it it's just once again another avenue for Scammers to take advantage of people and their hopes and dreams and aspirations. Uh, it was like last year, but I got added by some dude on Facebook that actually had a bunch of mutual friends with me. And I think it was that someone had hacked his account, mm -hmm. probably, and started using it for this attempted scam. But he had a picture uh, with a post that was like, oh yeah, so we accidentally had husky puppies and we're not breeders, so we're looking to give them away. Like, free husky puppies, basically. Yeah. And hey, it was $100 like, deposit shit, now. free, like, you know, and there's like, supposedly they were in the next town down, you know, and I was like, I don't know, I might hit this guy up. And then I noticed all of a sudden that post disappeared the next day and there was a new one up that was like purebred, like different breed of dog puppies for free. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, no. And I noticed too, I was starting to get this influx of weird friend requests from people who were mutual friends with him. And mm -hmm. each one of them was looking more and more sus than the last, you know. And I, was, I put out a thing about it. I just deleted all the extra friend requests I had gotten recently and extra friends that had added and blocked him and everything. And I warned everybody. I was like, yeah, who knows what this guy is going to do if you actually go to try to check out the puppies he's supposedly giving away. So oh, yeah. Or they ask for a deposit up front and they never... Because yeah, something like that. They're like, oh, the puppy's free, but we require an adoption fee of this much. Oh, here's the cash app. Like, and be like, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I haven't even seen the puppies yet. No. <laughs> there have been uh, breeders that I know of that um, have done that to people. They've asked for the full deposit. And they charge more than Nate's mom. And some of those people have contacted Nate's mom like expecting a, you know a cat and she's like I don't I mean there's nothing I can do for you you know I'm sorry but it's yeah well it's crazy what people what links people will go to 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 take other people's money yeah it it happens every day and it's it's ruthless out there it is ruthless what these people will will go to and the extent of these of these people, like it, it's just, mm. I it's have like, no. It's so terrifying to me the video that Mark Rober did, where he actually had the dude that went over to the other country to start like oh in India, yeah, and like literally like 
they were worried and had to leave the country because they were worried they were actually hiring people to kill them. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah, well, you saw that number, $8.8 billion. Mm -hmm. Like, you gotta think, I know people out there who would kill over, over like, $500. Imagine $8.8 billion and you're fucking with their, you're fucking with their industry. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing. I'm not defending what they're doing. All I'm going to say is if it comes down to it and if I had the choice of how the, that company could go down, firebombing would be nice. You know, just a fire a big Tomahawk cruise missile into the side of it and just let it fall. And, you know, everyone, every, every like, unscrupulous asshat inside can get it. Well. But... Um, but I have more of a heart than that, I guess. I don't know. If I could get my hands on the person that took all that money from my dad. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It, I mean, hell. I, I'm, I, I, it, it happens it to a lot of people. It pisses me all so much. Yeah. Ruin, it it, the it fact ruins people's that, lives. Yeah, the fact that they target people that are lonely and, you know, are gullible to their schemes is... Yeah is what pisses me off the most. Yeah. It's in every shape and form. I mean, they're just going to keep on doing it. Definitely. But, all right. Anywho, I think that's going to do it, everybody. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check out more from MK by clicking the link in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I'm Nick. That's Bilbo. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace.